Okay, so tonight's video is about how to solve any projectile motion problem. So after tonight's video and tomorrow's class, you should be able to solve any problem involving projectile motion. So first, some key points. One, and these are really steps. So steps to solving any projectile motion problem. First, cleverly assign coordinates. So in every situation, you're going to want to think for a second, where should I set the origin to make this problem really easy to solve? Next, resolve initial vector into components. So if you have some vector, let's say we have a velocity vector that's 30 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees above the horizon, we want to resolve that vector into its components in order to start the problem. So we want to know its y and x component. Then we'll solve x and y separately. Remember, they're completely independent things, so we're going to solve x and y separately. And then finally, if needed, so if the problem says something like, what's the velocity vector after the object has traveled for four seconds, we'll have to take our current x and y solutions and find the resultant velocity vector. A convenient fact if an object is launched and lands at the same height, final velocity is the negative of the initial velocity. So let's say I launch something with an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. And it goes across a football field, maybe. When it lands, if it lands at the same height, so if we have the object land and start on the ground, its final velocity is negative 12 meters per second. So a convenient fact, if an object is launched from and land to the same height, final velocity is negative initial velocity. Alright, move in right along. I need to clarify something, sorry I just looked back at the book um, and realized I'd said something wrong. It's initial y and final y, by the way. Because x isn't changed, it wouldn't switch from positive to negative. So that should say final y velocity is negative initial y velocity. Sorry about that. Alright, so let's look at some examples. I'm going to work two of them. Um, these examples cover just a little of the potential questions you could be asked. You could be asked any question at all about projectile motion, so be ready. A block slides off a very smooth 4 meter table with a speed of 2 meters per second. How far from the table does it land? What is the puck's velocity upon landing? Okay, so first of all, we already know what our initial vectors will be, or should know from the problem. So let's talk about the things separately. I want to emphasize that. Let's talk about x and y. So for x, we have an initial velocity of 2 meters per second. And that's about it. For y, we have a height of 4 meters. And we have a acceleration, or as we know, pull of gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. You might be wondering, okay, well, I got confused yesterday because you kept saying one of those should be negative and positive. Well, let's cleverly define our coordinate system. Let's have the ground be 0 in y. And let's have the place where the object falls off the table be 0 in x. So here's our origin. And it is most convenient to do it this way uh, most of the time, to set the ground as 0 in y and the place where the object started 0 in x. So that relates to that key point of cleverly assigning initial, or so cleverly assigning a coordinate system. How far does the puck, uh, how far from the table does the puck land? Usually, in solving problems involving falling objects, so things that just kind of fall off tables, the first step is to figure out the time it takes to fall. So, let's use our information in y, because it's falling in y, and try to figure out the time it took to fall. 
Okay, so I'm going to refer back to my equations, and I'm going to pull out the one for position, because height is a position. y equals y naught plus v naught y plus one half a y times time squared. Okay, so now we can do a couple things. Since we sent the ground at zero, our final y position will be zero. Our starting y position is our height, and that's going to be positive because we've set the origin down here on the ground. We have no initial y velocity, that's zero. And we know that g, hmm, we didn't decide the sign of g. So if my origin is down here on the ground, that makes positive y pointing up. And since gravity points downward, this will need to be a negative. So let's go ahead and just put the negative in the equation, minus 1 half g t squared. Now we'll solve for time. 0 equals height minus 1 half g t squared. And if I move the 1 half g t squared to the other side of the equation, I get 1 half g t squared equals h. Okay, I keep going. Let's multiply by 2, divide by g, and I get t squared equals 2h over g. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get t equals the square root 2h over g. Now we're just ready to plug in numbers. You might be wondering, Mr. Melvin, how did you know to solve for time when the problem doesn't even ask for it? Remember I said, whenever you're involving an object that falls to the ground, it's usually really helpful to know how long it took. And that makes the problem a lot simpler. So whenever I'm faced with a problem of finding um, an object falling off a table or off a cliff, the first thing I think about is time. And so that's a hint on how to solve problems like this. I need to clean up this slide, um, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so I cleaned up the slide and went ahead and uh, plugged in the numbers, and I got time is 0.9 seconds. You should do that and confirm that is correct. Now that I've done that, I am ready to find how far from the table the puck lands. So remember I said finding that time is going to make things easier. So let's look back at what we have. In x, we have initial velocity of 2 meters per second, and really that's about it. But now we know we have a time of 0 0.9 seconds. And that time's the same for x as in y. The puck hits the table after, or hits the ground after 0.9 seconds, no matter what's happening. Okay, so now we have a velocity, we have a time, we can easily find a position. This goes back to x equals x plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. We called our starting place, sorry, that should be x naught. We called our starting place zero in x, so x naught goes away. We know our initial x velocity, and I should be consistent and call that v naught two. And we have no acceleration in x, so our equation is x equals v naught t. x, therefore, equals 2 meters per second times 0 0.9 seconds. And if you multiply that out, you should get 1.8 meters. So that's how far from the table the puck lands. OK, now we're ready to go for the second part. What is the puck's velocity upon landing? I'm going to clean up this slide, so if you need to cop anything, um, pause the video and do so. Alright, so here's what we now know. In x, and at x naught is 0, x final is 1.8 meters, v naught x is 2 meters per second, and in y, in y, our height equals y naught equals 4 meters high, and g, our acceleration, is 9.81 meters per second squared, and the time until the puck hits the ground is 0.9 seconds. Now we want to know what is the puck's velocity upon landing. So velocity is a vector, 
meaning I'm going to have to find an x velocity, a y velocity, put them together, and give the angle between them. So that's going to be a lot of work. We have our x velocity at the end because velocity in x is constant. So this v naught x is also our v final. There's no acceleration in x, so that doesn't change. Now we've got to find our velocity in y. Well, we have a height, we have a um, acceleration, and we have a time. So why don't we use the time in that simple equation, v equals v naught plus a t. v naught is zero, the puck sits on the table, so v equals a t. This is for y. v y equals negative 9.81 meters per second squared times 0 0.90 seconds. Okay, so now we solve that out. And when I use those numbers, I get negative 8.83 meters per second. So now we have a final velocity in y, negative 8.83 meters per second. Okay, so now I am ready to find a resultant velocity vector with a magnitude and an angle. Alright, so here's what we need to solve the last bit of this problem. We're going to put this vector back together and find out its magnitude and its angle. So first, for its magnitude, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So our v in both directions, final v, is vy squared plus vx squared square root. And that comes from v squared equals vy squared plus vx squared. So I just went ahead and did the square root on both sides. Pythagorean theorem. Now we plug in and we find out what our answer is. So I'm just going to grab my calculator and I'm going to do 8, sorry, negative 8.8 3 squared plus 2 squared and take the square root. And I get my final velocity is 9.05 meters per second. Now I need to know its angle. Do the angle in a different color. So this is going to be tangent or inverse tangent. For our angle, angle equals inverse tangent, showed this to you a couple days ago, of y over x. And I do keep the signs, negative 8.83 meters per second over 2 meters per second. So tangent can handle negatives and positives, it knows what to do. And then I will figure out where this calculator has an arc sign button, or rather an arc tan button. Okay. So 8.83 as a negative, divided by 2, and I need the inverse tangent of that. And so my angle is negative 77.24 degrees. Now let's think about what this means. We know our x velocity is in positive x, and we know our y velocity points down. And so our vector points down and to the right. So it has a negative component in x, sorry, sorry, a positive component in x because to the right is positive in x, and a negative component in y. And if we kind of extend out what I've drawn here to a full Cartesian coordinate system, our angle is under the x-axis, which makes it a negative angle. So we can confirm that this angle makes sense because our vector has to be under the x-axis. It has a component to the right and it has a component down. If you're wondering, should the v be positive or negative, the answer is the angle takes care of it. I know exactly which way it points in both directions. I know it points to the right and down because of that angle. If you need to get anything off this slide, do so, and then I'm going to flip to a new problem. So I was just watching football with Mr. Thopper, and I saw someone kick a field goal from about 30 meters away, and I was thinking, I wonder how high the ball is when it crosses the goal line. 
And so, you're going to solve that problem for me. A kicker wishes to kick a field goal, so he sets the ball on the ground at a distance of 30 meters from the goal. Assuming he kicks the ball at an angle of 45 degrees at a speed of 27 meters per second, what is the ball's height above the ground when it goes over the crossbar? Now, there were some football terms in there, so let's draw a picture to make sure everybody's clear. All right, here is going to be our football field. And over at the end of it, we will have the goalpost. Here is our kicker. And maybe he's wearing a little football helmet with some kind of face mask. According to this problem, our kicker is 30 meters from the goal. 30 meters. And if that problem, if you're like, wait, I don't know what it means when it goes over the crossbar, it just means when it gets to the goal. So after the ball goes 30 meters, what is the ball's height above the ground? Okay, so he kicks the ball at 27 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees. That's a vector, friends. So, some steps you're going to have to take to solve this problem. Resolve that vector into its component parts using sine and cosine. So find its y component, find its x component. Find those components. Figure out how high the ball is, what its y position is, at 30 meters. Okay, copy down anything you need to. Maybe take like five minutes, go try this problem. On the next slide, I'm just going to give you the answer real fast. Okay, so let me walk through this real fast. I've been conscious that my last few videos have been pretty long. We know v naught is 27 meters per second. I'm reading from the top down. We know our final x position is 30 meters. That's how far the ball goes when it crosses the goal. Therefore, v naught x is 27 times cosine 45 degrees meters per second trig functions from two days ago. v naught y is 27 sine 45 degrees meters per second. Now we can find time. Remember I told you that's always super helpful to know time. What time it is when the ball goes 30 meters. So x, now reading in blue, I color coded x and y. Blue, x equals v naught x times t. And that's just reduced down from the big x equals x naught plus v naught x t plus one half a x t squared. So 30 meters equals 27 cosine 45 meters per second, which is v naught x times t. Then I grabbed a calculator, solved for t, and got 1.6 seconds. You might want to confirm that that's correct. Then I went over to y. y equals v naught y t plus one half a t squared. I don't have an initial y position, it's on the ground, and I told you to cleverly define the ground as zero. So fill in the y equation, 27 sine 45 degrees meters per second times 1.6 seconds plus 1 half, and then I had to go down to the next line. Ran out of room. Times negative 9.81 meters per second squared. If I set the ground as the origin, up is positive in y, down is negative in y, and so gravity pulls down, negative 9.81 meters per second squared times the time I found it from x, 1.6 seconds squared. And then if I do out that math, my final answer is, drum roll please, I'm going to have to write it a little above, y equals 18 meters. Mr. Melvin, you went through that problem really, really fast. Yes. This is the speed you're going to have to get used to doing these problems at. If you want a slower example, rewind the video to the last one. This uses the exact same concepts, exact same equations, just arranged in a different way. All right, there's extra practice on the website. Also, handily, your book has lots of problems in it. The ones that have one little red dot are things you should all be able to do on your own. And then the answers to the odd numbered problems are in the back of the book. So if you look in your book at the problem sets for chapter four, some problems have one little red dot by them. Pick a few from section four, four, Try them, check your answer in the back. That's all. See you tomorrow.